Today on Logan Lee Adventures, I go on an adventure to a whole new island in Hong Kong with my friend Steph. As always, we are served lots of scrumptious food and epic sights. Morning, guys. So to start the day, before we do this hike, and before I meet up with Steph, I'm just gonna grab a few snacks from this bakery. This is like a typical Hong Kong bakery, and they have so many delicious bites. So. Let's do is grab a tray and a stick, and then let's see what I want. This is what I got. The Yongping 360 is a gondola lift on Lantau Island in Hong Kong. That's right, we are exploring a whole different side of Hong Kong now, away from where I'm staying in Hong Kong Island and away from the bustle of Kwanlun Peninsula. We also went on such a clear day. I've been lucky during my trip to Hong Kong. The season has just been perfect for clear sunny skies each day. Of course, what you don't see is my profusion of sweatiness, but it sure beats overcast, aka smog, aka pollution coming down from the mainland China any day. And as the cable car glides over the South China Sea, in the distance I can see the bridge that connects Macau and mainland China, as well as, of course, the best panoramic views of Hong Kong. Hong Kong is made of islands, more than 200. Lantau Island is where we are soaring high above. It's also the largest island in Hong Kong, actually adjacent to the Hong Kong International Airport where I flew in. What surprises me most about this metropolis? Well, the mountains. When you think of this fragrant harbor, skyscrapers and high density population comes to mind. But look around, I'm literally in a cable car going over clear blue waters and lush green curves of mountains. 75% of Hong Kong's total land is actually the countryside. Within those mountains are multiple hiking trails. So for my friends like Steph, who lives here, these trails are a much needed antidote to the frantic pace elsewhere. Filled with tea houses and where we arrive from our cable car, Steph takes me to one of her top local spots in Yongpin village. This food joint is actually behind the old traditional style village, serving up local specialties. <laughs> Chicken, and we got beef, and we got our tofu. Uh, what's the name of it? To eat this, you just put a little bit of sugar on it. <laughs> Honestly, I can eat all day, but now we're heading towards the big Buddha, which you can kind of see on the hill. It doesn't look that big from here, but apparently, when you're there, it's gonna be bigger. Made it up to the big Buddha. The details of it is quite beautiful. But this view is even better. Sitting 34 meters high and facing north to look over the people, this majestic bronze Buddha draws pilgrims from all over Asia. The eyes, lips, incline of the head and the right hand, which is raised to deliver a blessing to all, combine to bring a humbling depth of character and dignity to the massive Buddha. It took 12 years to complete. We had climbed 268 steps all the way up to see the statue up close. Of course, the Tian Tan Buddha, aka Big Buddha, is worth the trip itself all the way to Lantau. However, there's so much more to see here just beyond the village. From the Big Buddha, I saw this orange roof temple complex and wondered what it was. So we hiked all the way down, which is much easier than all the way up in this 40 degrees heat. Woo! The remote Polin Monastery, meaning Precious Lotus, is hidden away by lush mountains, is one of Hong Kong's most important Buddhist sanctums and has been dubbed the Buddhist world in the south. Home to many devout monks, this monastery is rich with colorful manifestation of Buddhist iconography and its pleasant garden is alive with birdsong and flowery scents. The Grand Hall of 10,000 Buddhas is built in the classical architectural concepts of the Song Dynasty and includes a shrine hall, an exhibition hall, a meditation hall, an abbot's chamber, and a scripture library and other multifunctional facilities. 
What I love about all of this are the array of vibrant colors, especially the sunshine, the tiled rooftops, the gardens surrounding the monastery, and the little details engraved everywhere truly shows the craftsmanship and attention to detail that went into the building for such a peaceful religious residence tucked away in these mountains. You bet the architecture nerd in me is having a field day. After we walked back to the Nyongpen village to find the funniest thing. A whole art gallery dedicated to chopsticks. And did it ever live up to its name? Each little guy were uniquely designed. We got some snacks for our little road. So this one is Calvi, I guess roast chicken flavor. It's pretty good. Steph recommends it. That's my it. favorite. Ooh, okay. And then she grew up eating these pizza <laughs> ones that we're gonna try out too. I love, love, love. If anything, the theme of this trip has been weird Different flavor. flavor. Chips. <laughs> yeah. That's From, when you know you're an Asian, though, like when you actually get good flavor chips and yeah. not just like the barbecue. Wait, one. Wait, yeah. <laughs> Where are we heading to now? Um, it's Kaio. It's uh, kind of like a fisherman village on Ooh. this island. <laughs> um, yeah, there's like a lot of like really cool stores there. Yeah. Tai-O is home to the Tenka people, a community of fisher folk who've built their houses on stilts above the tidal flats of Lantou Island for generations. These unusual structures are interconnected, forming a tightly knit community that literally lives on water. All the activities surrounding the harbor, the traditional seafood market, and the daily life in the stilt houses is like stepping into a place where the industrialization and modernization of Hong Kong hasn't touched yet. Tai O used to be a very important trading and fishing port, but this is a thing of the past as the younger generations have moved out. You can still see the old folks making a living the old traditional way at this lively market, which remains one of the favorite places for locals to buy their fish and dried seafoods and the shrimp paste which is famous for this area. Yeah, this definitely doesn't cost that much. Should be like a chewy kind of feeling. Mm. Since it's like the seventh circle of hell outside, the Taro's smoothie, it's so freaking hot. Oh, I mean, getting a smoothie and sitting right underneath the AC is like an afternoon activity itself. It's quite good. Mm. Right? I'm actually surprised. Because <laughs> this, this is such like a hole in the wall. <laughs> As you can see. To end the night, I'm just having a little quick dinner. Uh, Steph had to have dinner with her dad. So we're gonna see each other tomorrow in our last my last day in Hong Kong. I got roasted goose and this is actually, even though it's a typical Hong Kong meal, it's actually one of my favorite meals ever that I had growing up. So when I had growing up, my parents would bring home goose with like plum sauce on the side and like roasted and we, I would eat it with rice and with Chinese broccoli just like this meal. And see what it tastes like. Dipping it into the plum sauce. Literally, flashback to my childhood. So great. So, make sure you don't miss this type of meal when you're in Hong Kong or really anywhere in the world. Um, if you can get goose. So tasty. Roasted. That was our wondrous adventure on Lantau Island. Give this video a like, leave a comment, as well as subscribing because in the next video, I leave Hong Kong with a bang.